Welcome back to the On The Ball podcast. This is episode 113. I wasn't sure because I've recorded another episode just before, so I've lost track, but I'm pretty sure it's 113. Uh, we are back on Zencaster, as you would have seen in the last episode. Just a, just a two-stint episode. Episode stint on Zencaster. We'll be back in person in no no time um, because it's way better in person. But anyway, um, here today, joined by Christian Pilcher. How are you, mate? Uh, unreal, mate. It's been a while, but pleasure to be back on. Yeah, it's good to hear, mate. Uh, you are our super coach expert today. Um, you love all things footy and super coach in particular, one of the most knowledgeable blokes in the community. <laughs> it's got me. I tried to say it without laughing. Yeah. Look, I can't Thanks, lie. Mate. We're, we're, nah, we're experts. Let's claim it. And then when you find out, I don't know people's first names. That's when you're going to realize I'm not, but we'll play on. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to go team by team and we're just going to point point out a couple um, super coach prospects, whether it be as a premium, whether it be as like a mid price or whether it be as a rookie. We're just going to bring up a couple of players. Uh, did this for NRL and I thought it went quite successfully. So I'm just going to give it a crack here today. Um, we're going to be talking about super coach, but it also probably will apply to AFL fantasy uh, and it might be titled AFL fantasy and super coach just to get more um, people listening. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, yeah absolutely um all right starting with adelaide mate who do you like from adelaide is it the obvious rory laird or um yeah i've i've actually got a few in my team um so yeah rory laird's the obvious one pretty much every man and their dog has him moved into the midfield halfway through last season started averaging about 110 so he's he's underpriced uh, probably should be around the 600k mark, but yeah, in my opinion, he is a must-have player. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so here I've got a list of predicted scores, what I think people will average. I've also got a list of value, and I think he's one of the only people who is in the top 40 for both. And you think that's not a good thing, but most of the value is clogged up by like you know minimum price rookies because they're obviously going to be better value than someone that's ranked uh, price at 700. Uh, yeah, here's the obvious one. Rory Laird's probably a must-have, you'd have to say. Uh, someone else I'm interested in, I think his name's James, but Rowe, he's uh, a forward on Supercoach. He's predicted to play. He's a 117.3k rookie. He got 63 in his game in the, well, what's it called now? It's not the JLT. It's like the Amy Community Series. Or the something. NAB Cup. Yeah, so obviously you're not going to say he's not going to come out and say he's going to average 63 um but uh even if he averages 50 um at that small price you'd probably take that so adelaide not got too much going for them but that's probably one thing i like the look of it for the crows anyone else you want to mention uh yeah so i have james Rowe, and then i also have jordan butts um yeah yeah i've got that gm he uh he played in the JLT on Charlie Dixon, so they obviously back Dickens. him in, back him in as a tour defender. Dixon actually didn't get on the score sheet, so quite a decent Definitely. player. Um, yeah, I've currently got him at D seven. Should have some decent job security. Probably won't make too much money, but there's not many rookies down back, so he's a solid selection. Yeah, Will Hamill's also another one I'm interested in. He's a lot more expensive at 210, but I think he's got better job security and he's been predicted to play on the wing, which could see more points, but that's probably too expensive to be picking anyway. Uh, but yeah, Rory Laird, awesome. James Rowe, and Jordan Butts are probably the biggest two there. Um, next up, we've got the Brisbane Lions. Who do you like from the Brizzy Lions? Um, yeah, I actually have no Brizzy players in my side. Um, are you... Are you anti having Lockie Neal in your team? Yeah, well, I'm kind of tossing it up. I've kind of got like two teams. One has him, one doesn't has him. So he's probably the first name I'll say. Um, he'll definitely be the number one midfielder. Like there's probably a 90% chance, but at 720K or whatever he is, it's a big price to pay and there's there's better value, I reckon. But you can't go wrong with picking him. Just set and forget. Yeah, like you're caught, even when he gets tagged, he still does well. So uh, it's not really an issue there. Uh, in terms of rookie value, uh, Tom Fullerton is a ruck and forward. He is predicted to play. There's, a, there's probably been some people confirmed to play. I'm not really up 
um, with the latest news. So I don't know if these people are actually playing, but I'm just going off a predicted lineup so far. Uh, you got 54, I believe, in the JLT, uh, and that that'll do a job at 128.9k. Uh, there's actually a lot of rookie rucks this year, which hasn't really yeah. been a component we've had to consider in previous years. Are you still going to be looking to have a loophole option throughout your team, or are you just going to load up on eight playing rookies? Uh, yeah, I'm actually, on the bench? I'm actually not having a loophole yeah, going I'm, in with all playing with rookies. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. I'm going for the cash only uh, option. Uh, so yeah, I back that 100%. Um, someone else, I don't know his first name, so I'm just going to say Jay Payne. <laughs> uh, predicted to play off the half back line. Uh, he's a defender on Supercoach. He's a bit more expensive at 250 similar to Hamlet. It's an awkward price. You don't really want to be picking a rookie up at that price, but um, he will have a bit better job security, and he averaged like 61. I think he played last year, so... He's all right value, but yeah, you don't really want to be paying that kind of coin for a rookie option. So I understand if you're not keen on that. Uh, anyone else you want to mention for Brisbane? Um, not many from Brizzy actually tempt me, yeah, but no. I'll just throw out McCluggage. He's probably the um, he's probably got a good chance of breaking out into the elite category this season. Yeah. But like, I wouldn't be taking the risk on that one. Yeah, someone else I wouldn't be taking the risk of, but I think is underpriced is the big O. Uh, he's probably going to get more time in the ruck this year with Steph Martin leaving. So um, I calculated it, and when he plays ruck as opposed to tall forward, he does you know get more points, which you'd expect. But yeah, he's still he's not cheap at four hundred and forty three k. So probably not really a viable option, especially when you only have two ruckmen. I'm two surprised picks. he's ruck only, to be honest. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, that's actually a fair point. Um, but yeah, that's a cop for Big O. Um, all right, next up, geez, I've I legit just recorded an episode in alphabetical order and I've already forgotten it, but I think it's Carlton. Uh, we'll talk about Carlton. They've, in the past, they've been pretty uh, generous with their rookies. This year, not too many standouts. Um, who have you got in terms of Carlton players that interest you? Um, I've got Cripps locked in. At M5, I've had him the entire preseason. I just think he's way too cheap. He played last season with a niggle for most of the year, and he's shown that he can average pretty much 120 on multiple occasions in the past. So he's my number one Carlton prospect. Yeah, yeah everyone's all up about him. I'm not as keen, but um, yeah, I definitely see the appeal. What are your thoughts on Paddy Dow? Um, that's someone yeah. I've heard mentioned a lot. I'm personally not at that keen on him, uh, but are, do, are you going to potentially have him going into round one? Yeah, I'm tossing him up. Um, he's had some pretty good reports, and I think he played well in the JLT, but I currently don't have him, but he'd be my second pick for Carlton. Yeah, yeah. Uh, someone else I'd mention is Sam Doherty. Obviously, last year he was pretty hyped up coming back from his ACL or whatever he did. Maybe underperformed slightly of what we were hoping, but he's priced at 496, which I'd say is a little bit unders uh, when you, I think he had a few games shortened last year due to injury. So when you take those out, he did average over a hundred. So for a defender, that's fairly solid. And for under 500 K, he could be a cheaper premium option than like a Jake Lloyd or something. Um, next up, we have the Collingwood footy club. Collingwood, who are you looking at here? Uh, Grundy, 100%. And then probably, I don't mind Taylor Adams, actually. I think he's expected to play. I know he's got an injury cloud, but if he plays round one, then I reckon he's a good shout because Trelaw's just left, so he'll be the number one GM in the guts. And he averaged pretty much 110 last season, so... Yeah, are you rolling in with Gondi, as they call it? Yeah, Gondi. Rolling in Gondi. With uh, yeah, fair enough. I'll, I probably won't be. I think I'll be shirking the Gondi, but um, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. Uh, for me, my main guy from the Pies is Jeremy Howe. Uh, he absolutely was killing it at the start of last year. Uh, I think he was averaging like 121 if you take out the game that he got injured in, um, which is pretty nuts. Well, I think it was only three matches, so it was a small sample size, but... He's priced just over 500 at 517k. 
that's pretty undervalued. And if it, I'll be honest, I don't really know much about the new rules, but all I know is some of the ball winning defenders look like they're going to be benefited from it. So he could be someone who uh, benefits from that. Maybe you know more about the rule change and how it's going to help halfback flankers and stuff like that more than me. But uh, yeah, I think Jeremy Howe is very underpriced, but he gets injured a lot. So that's maybe something you want to factor into your picks. I'm a bit more risky in terms of that. I just back in the law of averages and um, pray that he doesn't get injured this year, but you probably shouldn't look at it like that. Um, do, you, do you know much about the rule change? or Which rule you are you know? talking about? I don't know. I've just heard a lot of people talk about how the halfback flankers scored very well in the JLT and they reckon it's to do with the rule changes, but uh, I don't really... Yeah, I don't know. I think it's just um, yeah, I don't really going back to 20-minute quarters, but I'm not yeah, really convinced sense. about it, to be honest. Yeah, I, like I know the other rule changes, like the man on the mark, but I can't see how that would... Yeah. impact one position as opposed to another so yeah i don't really get that but people are frothing over like Jaden short and stuff um all right there's, next a kick up, in, there's a kick in thing where um forwards have to stand further back so there'll be more play on oh, but oh well that could be so that's probably for short but like yeah yeah um all right s and mate who are you looking at here bombers yep yeah. so all pre-season, I've been real keen on Ridley. Has not left my side, and he's a bit of a pot as well. Um, yeah, that would be. Yeah. He was an absolute weapon last season, won the best and fairest, and I think he's only like 22, so odds are he'll keep improving. And they lost Adam Saad, so there should be a few more disposals there for him, and he should be on all the kickouts as well this season. So can't see why he wouldn't average minimum 105. Yeah, um, I am interested in both the men predicted to be listed in the followers, uh, Andy McGrath and Dylan Shield. They are kind of cheaper premium options in your midfield. Shield's at 548 and McGrath is at 510. Uh, and in my opinion, they're both slightly underpriced. But um, in the past, we've kind of predicted their breakout and they've not necessarily provided with the goods. So we'll have to wait and see on those two. Um, other guys from Essendon, I think it's Harrison Jones. Yeah. Uh, he is a forward, very, very cheap at 123K. He did only get 43 um, in the JLT, but, you know, it's a rookie's a rookie. And if he's playing, you'll probably just hop on it. Why not? Yeah. Uh, any other rookies here? Peter Wright, I've got him slightly. Wait, how much is he? <laughs> he's at 292, and he averages, no, he averaged 68 in 2019. Uh, so I've got him in top 25 for value, but like you, you'd have to be a ballsy man to roll in to round one with him. I think they actually do have some injuries in the forward line as well. Maybe like a James Stewart or something is injured. Uh, so maybe he could be one to benefit from that, but I respect you if you roll in with Peter Wright in like your F4 or something. <laughs> That's something I would have done in my first year of Supercoach. Um, anyone else or do you want uh, to move on? I'll give a quick you? shout out to Kyle Langford. Um, oh. bit of a breakout, breakout Spokey, and he started playing in the midfield at the end of last season and was averaging nineties. So he's a saucy one, but again, that would take some balls. Yeah. Um, all right, moving on to the Fremantle Darkers. Um, who, oh man, I'll tell you what, I'm excited about this one. Uh, I don't know his first name. I think it's Lloyd. Or it could be, but his last <laughs> yeah. name is Meek. He's been predicted to start in the ruck position because Darcy is injured, I believe. And uh, he scored, played the whole JLT pretty much in the ruck slot, and he scored 75. He is at 123K. Uh, I can't lie, if he's named, which he probably will be, I think I'm going to have to start him in my R3 slot. Um, that's just going to be serious cash if he's making 70s, 80s, even 60s at 123K. So I'm all about the... Lloyd Meek, and also that's a pretty sick name, if I'm going to be honest. Um, are you about Lloyd Meek in your R3? Um, I've actually, there's like three of them that are meant to be playing, and I've yeah, actually got the GWS. Like the same Kilda one. Yeah, oh, I've got the GWS one. Yeah, um, fair enough. I haven't really done any research, to be honest, on them, but. Yeah, like that is a waste of time if we're, yeah. if we're just going to blatantly say it. Um, yeah, there's like a St. Kilda one as well. Like yeah. Paul Hunter. But they're all going to make something. like. A lot of cash, so it doesn't really matter who you yeah, choose. It, yeah, exactly. It's a pretty pretty high floor for the old Ruckman. Uh, anyone else from the Fremantle Footy Club? 
that you uh, are interested in. Fife hasn't left my team, similar to Ridley. Um, like you, a lot of people are avoiding because he tends to miss a couple games. But like, <laughs> but like, what I'm saying is, I just pick the blokes who I think you're going to average the most. Don't care about injury yeah. history, but um, yeah, it's just luck, really. Yeah, isn't it? but when he's when he's fit and firing, he's probably the best player in the comp. So that is why I have him. And yeah, yeah that's about it for Freo. Yeah, I'm probably going to have him as well. I've got him undervalued and I've got him as the 10th high scorer in Supercoach this year. So uh, that probably points awesome. to me ending up rolling into round one with him. Uh, any other Freo players? This is, I keep mentioning people at this price point and I know it's not ideal, but someone like an Alex Pierce down back is 230k. Probably has good job security because in, I think it was 2019, he was like, People were talking about him as like an all Australian smokey at one point as a key defender. Did he miss uh, the entire gonna, season last year? I think so, but don't um, quote me on that. Uh, he could have played a little bit, but I don't remember hearing much about him. But I didn't. Well, didn't follow Freo that intently. Uh, he average. He's not a high scoring um, super coach, but if you can get a defender at that price who's going to play week in week out in a key role, could could do all right for you. But yeah, probably would steer clear of that. They've got a few guys in that price point, actually, like uh, Joel Hamling, Sam Switkowski. Don't really want to waste the a pick boys. on them. Oh, what do you think on um, Hayden Young? Oh, yeah. Actually, what do you think yeah. on Hayden Young? Yeah, he's a prop. He's at that price point, but he has a lot higher potential than those yeah, guys. He's, he's probably the pick of that bunch just on... Yeah, is he Yeah, is he in your team or not? No, he's not, actually. He's just a bit too much. But, um, yeah. yeah, what about what about a Connor Blakely at 295K? Is that tempting you? given his history of being a Mate. solid super coach scorer. I didn't even know he was that cheap, to be honest. But, yeah, haven't, yeah, haven't pretty, looked at him at all. Yeah, I don't really know what's going on with him, but he is that cheap, so who knows? He might have fallen off the way. So I don't even know if he's, like, a guarantee to play. Um, all right, moving on to the team that is after Fremantle, which you'll find is the Geelong Cats. Who are you looking at from Geelong? Pretty star-studded, not too many rookies, I don't think, because um, no no man can get into that team. But uh, Yeah, so I've got Danger in my team. Um, interesting. He's been avoided a little bit because of an interrupted preseason, but the chances of him being the number one forward are pretty much 90%, same with Neil. And then I've got Jordan Clark, 240K. I think he scored like 120 playing on the wing or halfback in JLT. So yeah. he's looking the goods. He'll make a bit of cash. Yeah, for yeah. Geelong, I'm looking at uh, Tom Stewart. I can't lie. I have a oh, bit yeah. of a love affair with Tommy Stewart. Yeah. I'm a big fan of I'd his work. i back him as well. I think he's slightly underpriced at 538. I think he will once again be one of the top scoring defenders, maybe behind the likes of Laird and Howe um, and Luke Ryan. Uh, yeah, it's Luke Ryan, yeah. Uh, yep. I was going to say Logan Ryan, but that's a Tennessee Titan cornerback. <laughs> um, but yeah, play on. Um, yeah, <laughs> Tommy Stewart, I, uh, something about him, I just froth him. Uh, but yeah, Geelong, bloody don't give us much in the rookie department, do they? Yeah. Um, I remember like two years ago, they had a couple when they had like Clark and Atkins and then they were blue balling us with Constable. But yeah, there's not really any rookies predicted to play. You could risk it for the biscuit if you want to pick like a Josh Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> Priced at around 320k. If you think um, he's going to kick bags or um, get hit outs off the behind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mate, how's that getting me so much? That shouldn't even be funny. Uh, and then Joel Selwood's cheap, but um, <laughs> he, he's, he, he does have a great super coach history in recent years, so I'll probably steer clear. Yeah. I'm trying to look at value for Geelong, but let's be real, they're not. They're just premiums all over the field. Um, but yes, fair play, Geelong. Anyone else you want to mention? No. Nah. Yeah, they're just, yeah, they're pretty super coach irrelevant, actually, unless you're just going to go for one of the top dogs. Uh, Gold Coast Suns, who are you rolling with here? Are you interested in Matt Rao? Yeah. Um, yeah we'll Wait, is he a we'll... must-have? Or... I, I don't have him, but he's in like 50% oh, okay. of sides. I just think right, yeah. I just think he's at the price. He's high enough in price where you're picking him to be a top 10 mid, and I'm just not sure if he's going to be that this season. Like yeah. He's only played four games, so yeah, it's... I'd rather go a bit safer. 
yeah, it's an extreme extrapolation. Um, but yeah, I'll probably have him just because he's underpriced. But yeah, I completely agree with you. What you mean? He's not cheap, is he? Um, any other Gold Coast Donnies you want to yeah, talk Yeah, I've about? actually got the sauciest pod in my side at D3, and that's Jack Lacocious at 430k. Oh, that's bold, um, that's bold. He moved into like an intercepting free man role in the second half of last year, and he started pumping out a few big scores, and he's really young, so I think this might be a breakout year. But if he busts, I'll just trade him straight out. But I think he's got a lot of <clears throat> a lot of upside. Yeah, fair enough. Jack Lukosius did have a good back end of last year, especially when they were getting peppered. So yeah, I, I actually, I'll be honest, I didn't know this, but I, it ca- came to my attention the last couple of days. I didn't realize the the golf in averaging when you win a game and lose a game. Like people average like fifteen different when you win and lose. Yeah, so that's maybe something I'll think about this year. But mm. um, yeah, that was that was interesting to learn because it makes sense, but I just didn't really know that much. Um, all right, GWS. Who are you looking at here? Yeah, so looking at my squad. Okay, yeah, I've got Matt Flynn, the GWS Ruckman, same as Lloyd Meek. Um, yeah, he'll make you a lot of cash. Uh, and I'll probably go with Kelly Clarkson. Similar, Kelly Clarkson. Similar with Fife. He's had a lot of injury troubles, but once again, if he's fit, he's going to average 115, so... You can't, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. Yeah, fair enough. Kelly Clarkson is in my top eight for Supercoach this year. And That's I've got beast. Him under, I've got him undervalued as well. So he'll be in my Supercoach team. Uh, other blokes I'm interested in, Tanner Bruin. Kelly I'll be honest, I actually think I played cricket against that bloke, but I have no idea. Tanner Bruin. I swear he played, I swear he played for Geelong Grammar. Because um, I'm pretty yeah, sure we there. had them like eight. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we had them like seven down and the bloke just wouldn't get out he faced like 150 balls and made like 30 so um, was he in the ones in year 10 then that's what i was thinking so earlier he must have been he was a pretty good bat he was wet. pretty had a good technique but yeah i remember that name because it was obviously quite unique uh so i'm pretty sure i did play against him and i actually think i also played against jai caldwell who i don't know if he went there as well but i don't know i could be making this up um, so he's definitely a prospect at 157k, um, expected to play off like the half forward flank, maybe do a little bit of time in the guts or whatever. Uh, he was impressive in the community series, scored 62, uh, impressed a lot of people who watched him. He's a midfielder for us on Supercoach and someone else I'm interested in, I don't know his first name, Buckley, Jay Buckley. Uh, he's a defense. Defender and midfielder in Supercoach. Not sure if he'll get named, so that's a wait and see. But, um, yeah, he has solid scoring potential. He is a little bit expensive at 223k. But, um, yeah, if he could get that gig in the GWS side, he could do a job. Uh, but, yeah, Isaac. <laughs> no, I'm not even going to mention Isaac. Going. I want to mention uh, Timothy Taranto. He's getting a lot of hype. But still, is he actually? Because he's 450k and people are saying breakout uh, year. But what, same with Rao, I'm just not convinced he's going to be. I like, swear he's already broken out IRL. Like, Yeah, because he's, he's the bloke that averages 105 and it's just not quite enough to be who's someone you want in your midfield. So, Yeah, dare I say he's a Dusty Martin type because he just chops it. Chops it. Um, like shocking yeah, so ball use. He's not ideal for super coach like a bit, and a bit certainly of an Ollie not Wines. ideal for fantasy. Um, Hawthorne. Hawthorne, Ollie quite... Wines' is pill. Uh, well, it's, just ignore, a, it's, just a, it's just a cube, isn't it? But um, yeah, I, I can't say anything bad about Ollie Wines this year. I'm taking a year off. I was harsh on him in 2019. He shut me up in 2020. So play on. Sorry, Ollie. Um, all right, Hawthorne Footy Club. Shout out to Jay Kurt. Um, who are you rocking with here? Or are you I've actually got anyone? five of them in my team. <laughs> Holy shit! Well, three three of them are like min price rookies who are apparently playing. Uh, playing so. uh, yeah, like Kashitsky and um, what's the other geezer's name? Brockman. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, Tyler Brockman. <laughs> and also Danny. But uh, I'll oh, mention yeah. the other two. Uh, so Impy, uh, former Port player, two hundred k. Should be running off. <laughs> <laughs> You've got me. You've made me laugh there. Mate, the he's in like 40% of teams, mate. He's, oh, he's playing oh, off half-back. Yeah, yeah. So 
Uh, respect. Two hundred k, and then also Tom Phillips, four hundred k, new recruit. Oh uh, yeah, scored one hundred actually, one hundred thirty five in JLT. <sighs> apparently playing mid midfield, so prospect. Not sure if I'll start him though. Yeah, but he's right. in at the there's moment. Not, there's not too many premiums, are there, from the Hawthorne Footy Club apart from T Mitchell? But I'm not too interested in. What him. about our man yeah, Scrimmy? Scrimmy's injured. Um, oh yeah, which true, is sad true, to true. see. True. Because I did have him in my team. He's underpriced. Um, I picked in. I picked him in February, and he was in my team. And I logged in yesterday to find out he is injured, which is sad. But um, stiff. Yeah, Kashitsky obviously hyped up because he kicked six in that JLT. I don't think we can expect that at the AFL level week in, week out. But um, he's definitely going to be a good option. He's actually a defender on Supercoach, which uh, is interesting when he is a full forward in – well, he's playing at full forward at the moment. Mm. Uh, other guys, yeah, as you mentioned, Downey. Uh, if you want to take a risk, this is real risky. Uh, I guess you could pick him in your defense. Ben McAvoy is uh, expected to return to permanent rucking duties this year. Kind of tested him down back last year. Big then big? he would swing. <laughs> big, big <segler. laughs> yeah. yeah, he's going to play as well. They're going to share oh, the rucking duties, but yeah. he's not going to be playing as a centre half back this year, where his point scoring took an absolute new king. So he could be undervalued at 456, but obviously most Mate, people are That's running actually with saucy. Because yeah, he's, so, you can pick him in defense, I think. Mean. Yeah, you can pick him in defense. So if he does play, I don't know, 70% at Ruck and Segler plays mainly as a forward, all of a sudden he could actually be an interesting prospect in the back line because he's been pretty good in fantasy in the past. Um, yeah, but that's all I've really got from Hawthorne. Uh, Tyler Brockman and Kaczynski are probably going to be some of the most picked. Thoughts on Titch? Players. Nah, I'm not, not interested. Actually, I have no idea. Yeah, could be, could be on. All right, next up, we've got the Melbourne Demons. Who are you rocking here? Are you any, rocking Clover? Are you rocking Petrarch? Oh, you've got Gorn, obviously. Oh, yeah. I was, he's the only one I've got on my side. I don't think they present much in terms of rookies. So um, I guess Oliver and Petrarca, as you just said, that you know what you're going to get from them. Just 110 plus yeah. every week. Let me throw out a name at you. All right. Neville Jetta. Never get okay. it. <laughs> Priced at 186k. Is he going to play? Never. Uh, according to Fox Sports, yes, he's never been a prolific scorer. Uh, I think in his most recent season, he's averaged mid 40s. <laughs> but he could do a job for you in the back line. That's all I'm going to say. It's a risky option. Not too much upside because he's not a rookie who could sprout into a gem, but. I don't know. That's just some Mate, food for thought. Wasn't he all Australian like three, four years ago? Yeah, but like it was like a um, Nick Smith sort of situation yeah. where like it just didn't um, show. I, actually, maybe he was good at super coach. I don't bloody know. No, I've just, um, I'm looking at it now. He's never averaged 70, so. Yeah, so, but at 186K, yeah. if he averages 60, you'll take that for sure. Um, other guys from Melbourne, James Jordan. Uh, he's predicted to get a start this week. Uh, he only got 37 in the JLT, but he's 123K. Probably Position? better options to go to, though. Uh, midfielder, which is not ideal, but uh, yes. And then if you want to, if you want to be risky, James Harms is yeah. 340K. I was going to say uh, him because he's back he's in the guts, apparently. Yeah, he is predicted to be in the guts. So if you want to take that risk, uh, go for it, but don't semi-hate messages when he averages 62.7 uh, but yeah but yes yeah. Uh, next up we've got north north melbourne and they are actually they're about that's all they're good for in footy at the moment is rookies and super coach but thank god for them because them and hawthorne are producing the goods this year do you have any north players and I pronounce yeah that with an f so i'm assuming you've got tom powell uh, uh, I will. I will. Yes. Yeah. So he's he's the main man. I think he's might even be the most selected player in the entire game. Oh, um, dead set. That's that's a that's an ego boost for sure for the young fella. Apparently, he's a weapon. Uh, 150k, and then uh, Zebel. Right. Yeah, new so roll I'm off very, halfback. Very very interested in Zebel. Yeah. I think he. k I think he might have tunned in JLT or ninety. Um, yeah, I think so. And I think he's taking kickouts, so oh, 
So lock him into your sides. Um, uh, that's beast. Uh, Dom Tyson as well. That's yeah. an interesting pick. Like it's very risky, but priced at two forty k in the past, he's averaged like eighties, ninety. I don't know. Don't know his extensive history, but uh, he averaged seventy six in his most recent season. I think it's Lewis Young. Is it? Uh, he came over from the Lockie. dogs potentially. Lucky Young. Did he come over nah, from the dogs? It's a different guy. <laughs> Lewis Young still at the dogs. Oh, I didn't oh, know that. I didn't know that. Stinker. I just checked it. I've had a stinker. Uh, play on, play on. Uh, he's 202K. He is DPP, rookie. That's not bad. Is he a rookie? I don't even know who this bloke is. I don't think Defender he's a mid status. Oh, fair play to him then. Absolute geezer. Uh, anyone else? Oh, Ben Cunnington, I think, is an interesting one. Yeah. Uh, he's priced at 439k. Uh, he averaged over 100 last year when he wasn't injured or tagged. And I think that's a serious undervaluing. But once again, as you talked about with that Matt Rowell sort of thing, it's that awkward price. Um, what do you think about Cunners? Yeah, pro- proposition. Um, North have got about like five blokes in that midfield who could all, who will all probably average around 100, I reckon. Um, my pick yeah. would probably be either Cunners or Simkin to take the next step, but yeah, actually, it's like pretty risky. Jai Simkin. I also like Luke McDonald. Uh, yeah, he's, he's underpriced a little bit because he played a few matches like tagging at the start of last year, and that really nuked his average. Yeah, uh, but when he went back to his normal role of uh, like a back pocket or half back flanker, he started tearing it up. So. He's a little bit underpriced as well at 512k, so that could be someone to look out for. When he moved into Uh, that role, he was second behind Lloyd, I think, in average. Yeah, yeah, he's an absolute weapon. Uh, Moving on to the Port Adelaide Footy Club, Um, your team. This is actually the last team I've done stats for, so moving on, you're going to have to carry the load. Yeah. Uh, But I'll I'll help you out for Port, as uh, even though you don't need much help. Who are you looking at? Here, Port, it's have to say it's your weakness as a super coach fan. Yeah. You're die hard for Port Adelaide. It's off it's ruined your last three seasons, let's be real. Maybe six seasons. Uh but is it gonna ruin your season again or are there genuine prospects this year, mate? Well, I'm tempted by about five of the premiums at Port Adelaide. I've I'm trying to do a no port policy, but I do have one in my team that's Sack Butters. Uh I just think he is gonna be an absolute god. This season, pumped out 130 in the JLT, is 21 or 20, 20 or 21. So like he's not going to get any worse. And he was a top 10 forward last season. So I think he's safe with upside. Um, the rookies are saucy because there's some beast rookies, but it's just whether they're going to get in the team or not. Um, Bergman yeah. and Lockie Jones, I don't think they're going to get games round one. Um. And then I'll say Ollie Wines. I don't. I actually don't mind him, but I'm not going to pick him. Um, yeah, fair enough. There, there's a few guys that are awkwardly priced, like a Fantasia. Um, oh yeah. If he, yeah. But yeah, he's probably going to play forward, which is an ideal for super coach. If he was playing like halfback, uh, he could do a job. Mate, but you yeah, know, maybe steer clear. You know, in JLT, he only played the first half and he pumped out an eighty. Oh, <laughs> with well, three yeah, snags. He, but, he yeah. could be an option. Yeah. He's only 270k, but it's a bit of a risk. Um, other guys like Willem Drew and Ryan Burton, they have upside, they're underpriced, but probably too expensive to consider. Yeah, but yeah Miles Bergman, if he plays, yeah, must have. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, other guys I'm interested in, Dan Houston. Yep. Uh, he's pretty underpriced at 489k. Uh, Brathin? No. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shout, out to, tell- shout out to Boke and Gray, but I won't pick them. I'll pro- yeah. I might, I might uh, pick Gray. We'll yeah, see. stay safe, and I hope you're well, but I'm not picking you. Uh, Miles Bergman is a sexy rooster. <laughs> I'm just looking at this photo here. Oh, it's got me telly. Um, all right, you know we saw his older rooster. brother at the gym when we went with Kurt <laughs> the other week. Oh, that's Fun, totally fun fact for you. That. Yeah, I played cricket oh, with him go. in like oh. under 10s. Anyway, oh, yeah, moving on. He's from our way. Uh, Richmond, <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, so I actually I don't like it, but I currently have Dusty sitting at F one. Disgusting. I don't like it. I want Laird instead of him, but I can't afford him, so I'm gonna have to do some maneuvers. But um, 
to be fair to Dusty, he's pretty safe to play all 22 games and average 100 minimum. So he's not a bad pick. Yeah, uh, anyone else you're interested in from the Richmond team? Similar to Geelong. Yeah. Not uh, many rookies getting option uh, chances. I mean, you mentioned him before. A lot of people have short. Um, not the biggest fan. <clears throat> I think everyone just jumped on him because he pumped out like 190 in JLT, which is <laughs> like pretty saucy, but I'm avoiding it. It's JLT. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah. anyone for you? Bit of Shay Bolton, uh, Shy Bolton. No, nah, I'll have to do my <laughs> mate. Oh yeah, you've yeah, I forgot you you haven't done the last five. Yeah. I don't know much about Jake Ertz or Arts, but he could be an interesting option. I don't know what his pricing is. But yeah, I yeah. haven't done stuff. Nah, he's so I'm not he's a bit too much. Uh, he's in the three hundreds. Uh, oh, disgusting. All right, Saint Kilda. Who are you looking at here? Yeah, R- Richmond's pretty feral, but uh Saints, Tom Highmore in defence. One of the most popular rookies, 117K. I think he's already been confirmed to get a debut round one. So especially considering there's absolutely no backline rookies, get him in. And then he's the only one I have, but Jack Steele was the second best mid last season. So he's probably one of the safest blokes out there. Pretty expensive. Uh, Thoughts on Jack Sinclair? (laughs) <laughs> New roll off the halfback yeah. flank Oh really? Yeah Nah you nah, got like 130 nah. in JLT People are toey Oh really? Well yeah. He's a mid only So I'm going to say no Oh okay Yeah That rules him out I think Hunter uh, Clark saucy actually But I won't be Yeah that's, that's interesting uh, Any interest in Jack Higgins? No. Nah. Signing from Richmond? No nah, Play on And they've also got one of the <laughs> They've also got a minimum price, uh, Ruckman. So uh, that's true. But yeah, Paul Hunter, as we mentioned, yeah, as we mentioned, they're all the bloody same. Uh, all right, Sydney Schwannies. Uh, the uh, Schwannies. They've actually got some rookies. The Schwannies, uh, Braden Campbell, and I forget who the other bloke is. Oh, Logan McDonald. Yeah, uh, they're both top ten picks who were meant to start. I think they're top ten picks. They might not be, but um. Any, anyone else you're interested in? I've got five Swannies in my current team, <gasps> all on the field. JPK? Don't. Nah. Does he play footy still? Yeah. It's not him. It's the other one. L Parker. JJK? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Luke Parker, M4. Um, I don't know why I've got him. I, just, I, I read something saying that instead of going off like on the interchange bench this season, he's going to rest at full forward as well as playing like mainly midfield. So that may push him <laughs> into the one one teens in average. Uh, Jake Lloyd is a lock in my opinion. He'll be the number one defender. And then, yeah, Braden Campbell, Chad Warner in the forward line, 140K. And Goulden, I think his name is. Yep, Errol Goulden. Yeah, Errol Goulden. He's the other rookie. Yeah. They're my five. Yeah, good good on it. Any thoughts on Lewis Melican? Uh, good head. Probably a good bloke. <laughs> Actually, no, shit bloke. DM'd him in year 11. He didn't respond. Oh, that's so, so stupid. Nah. Shout out to Lewis Melican, one of the favorites on the on the book body. Uh, moving on to the Weagles. Uh, yeah. Alex Witherden's made the move across. I don't know if he's a prospect eye. Um They've got a pretty star-studded team, so there's not too many. Rookies, yeah, except uh, all their um, play. yeah, all their premium midfielders are injured, so like none of them are prospects. Like I think Yo's injured, Tim Kelly's injured, and Shui. Gaff. Gaff's the only one that's fit. Yeah, so yeah, no. I've got no Eagles in my team. I don't think there's any rookies. To be honest, yeah, I, I don't know much Disgusting. about this guy, but Xavier Xavier O'Neill is in the predicted lineup. I'm looking at, never heard of him, so he could be a rookie or he could be a non-rookie. <laughs> um, so, and Josh Rotham, he I know a little bit about him. I had him a couple years ago. He scores pretty high when he plays. I don't know how cheap he is. I don't think he's that cheap. Um, so he could be an option. He usually plays off the half back, bit of an intercepting role. So he could be interesting. People are talking up Jake Waterman, but he's not expected really? to play because I think he's like 180k or something. Oh no, it's uh, a, don't it's don't um, quote me on that. 
you're thinking of Alec Waterman from the oh. Bombers. <laughs> I don't oh, know if no. they're related, but he's he's a hundred k. Jake Waterman's three something. Oh, okay, yeah, I was gonna say Jack Waterman's a wet. Um, all right, anyone He's else you want to mention? Uh, actually, is Nick Nui a prospect? Uh, Potench. If you don't go Gaundy, he's probably one of the next best options, along with Riley O'Brien. Uh, someone that's been copping a bit of hype is Duggan. I think uh, he's around four fifty in defence, but he's expected to play full time midfield. Guts. Guts. So. Look out for him, but yeah, that's about it. Is, is Witherden being a talked about option or not? Uh, yeah, but the coach came out and said he's not even a lock to play, so that's our warning signs. <laughs> All right, and finally, the Western Bulldogs, as we wrap up our third party of the day at 11 12 pm. Who are you looking at here, my friend? Uh, McCrafferson is at M1 at the moment. Uh, there's a rookie called Scott who's apparently on a play. Absolutely yeah, no idea who he is. No idea who he is. Fuck. He's predicted to play in the back pocket. Well, there you go. 102K. Um, yeah. Shout out. A lot of people have got Dunkley. I probably should have him, but it's a touchy subject for me. So, nah, jokes. Surely, um, surely that's... Surely there's not enough time in the midfield for all these guys, though. Yeah. Someone, surely someone's going to have to miss out. There's a lot of guys vying for time, and there's only three blokes who can go to the Senate and Techies. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's like six blokes. But, yeah, um, Smith, Trelaw, McRae, Dunkley, Hunter, Bont, Libba. Yeah. Mitch Wallace, nah, he's a forward these days. Um, but, yeah. Uh, there's a guy called Lachlan McNeil, predicted to be on the interchange. Never heard of him, so I'm assuming he's rookie. 100K. 102k. Oh well, there you go. But I don't don't know about that job security. Uh, just quietly. Um, but yes, uh, there's not really too much else to go through. Uh, that's all I wanted to do today was just go team by team and give you some analysis. Obviously, it's been pretty lighthearted, pretty jokes. Um, we haven't given it too much deep thought. I don't know if we'll be doing super coach content throughout the year potentially. Uh, but Pilch will obviously be um, involved in just the general AFL content as well moving forward. Uh, but today he was our resident super coach expert. So thanks for joining me, mate. No worries, mate. Thanks for having me on again. Yeah, looking forward to a fun year of AFL and potentially super coach content. Uh, so if you've enjoyed it, get around us and yeah, tune in for the next one. Cheers. Bye.